welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. This is um, an unboxing video of the Pressure King Pro electric pressure cooker. Uh, and it also includes the first two recipes that I've cooked in the pressure cooker. So what you can see here is my friend Ali um, hacking away at the box viciously with a sharp kitchen knife. Not the recommended method for unboxing things, children at home. Don't try this. <coughs> Excuse me. The Pressure King Pro, um, I bought the black one which retailed at around about £70. I think it's available in Argos. It's available from High Street TV as well. A lot of people seem to get them from there, but I got mine um, through the Little Woods catalogue. So I think they're fairly freely available all over the place. Quite difficult to get out of the box, as you can see. I had to give it quite a wiggle there. So it is a 12 in 1 multifunction digital pressure cooker and it cooks food up to 90% faster than standard oven methods and retains flavour as well allegedly. Inside the outer packaging we find a nice, um, there's your instruction sheets and then we find a nice lump of polystyrene which is currently cluttering up my work surface because how do you get rid of polystyrene? They don't recycle it, I don't want it. It's just standing there really waiting for me to make a plan. Inside there is a lovely plastic bag which I will most certainly reuse as a reseller and both of those boxes, the outer box and the inner box, they'll be they'll be reused so we're going to help the planet one way or another. You've got your handy tips to help you get started leaflet there. The larger leaflet is a reprint of one of the pages of the instruction manual so I presume that's the one that people were ignoring and they felt that they ought to put a larger bit in there and underline some bits in red. So there is also in this packaging a recipe book which I have glanced through but I haven't actually made any of the recipes per se. My plan for the pressure cooker is to make a beef stew. There's my beef sitting there. You saw my bag of casserole veg. So there is an LCD control panel on the front. Sorry if you can hear my dog barking in the background. Inside we find the plastic steam tray. There's a plastic measuring cup as well. Uh, that's the connection cable as well in that little bag there and uh, and the instruction manual. The copper inner pot is the bit that you do the cooking and you don't put any water into anywhere apart from inside that copper pot. The Pressure King Pro comes in different, si different sizes and I don't know if the pot is copper in all of the sizes. This is the five litre version which has the copper inner pot. I don't think you would care what colour it was but you know the point is that the food and all the liquid only go inside that inner metal pot. You need to make sure that you don't put it in between the pot and the outer cooker. So we had a quick look through the instructions and then we had a slower look through the instructions and then we had another look through the instructions. I didn't find it the simplest thing to use but I did realise that I had to do what they call a steam clean on it before you use it. So we read this bit that was the before cooking how to steam clean uh, we read that, apparently we read that for ages, I didn't realise how long we focused on that, but here we still are reading that, still reading, still reading, discussing with each other whether it made sense or not. I must admit I was quite scared of the pressure, pressure cooker. My recollections of pressure cookers are the kind of the old ones that your granny used to have with the, the knob on top that would rattle ferociously and, and if you didn't do it properly the knob would fly off and make a dent in the ceiling. Um, and I actually, funnily enough, I bought one of these ones about a year and a half ago and it sat in the kitchen in its box for about a week and then I took it back to Asda and got my money back because I was scared to open the box and get started. <laughs> I was I was so unnerved by the concept of, of blowing the roof off the house that I, I left it in the box and then I took it back to the shop. <laughs> Excuse me. So there's only bits. You get a plastic measuring spoon. You don't get that plastic jug. That's my own model's own jug. <laughs> um, and I believe we filled it. Now the mistake that we made, or rather me, because Ali didn't make the mistake. The mistake that I made to do the steam clean was that I filled the pressure cooker with cold water. What we discovered afterwards was that if we had filled it with hot water, bearing in mind it was only for the steam clean, if we'd filled it with hot water it would have reached pressure much more quickly and this stage would have taken, hello Ali, would have taken a tenth of the time that it did but I filled it with cold water not knowing any better and it took a very long time 
for it to reach temperature and even begin to build steam to reach pressure. So I put in two large jugs. I think that's a three litre jug. And I, I, I think there's a minimum and a maximum mark inside. And if I recall correctly, we had to fill it to about four and a half litres for it to reach the maximum mark. So there's Ali peeling all the bits of plastic off. And she got the good job. It's like when you buy a mobile phone and you peel the plastic off. Look at her peeling. Some of the plastic would not come off around the handle. We did struggle with that. I think she's looking for that sharp knife again. I think I hid it, took it away so she couldn't hack herself to death with it. So there's the second jug of water going in. Uh, we were still really quite unsure at this point about whether we were doing the right thing or not. I'm not quite sure. This is my arm coming in there and interfering with whatever Ali was doing. Getting involved. <laughs> so the, the we filled the pressure cooker with water. You don't put anything else in for that steam cleaning. You don't put any cleaning products or anything in there. The copper bowl itself lifts out and can be washed normally. Apparently you can also put that in the dishwasher. And also the entire lid comes apart for washing, although that's the part I haven't actually got to grips with yet. On the side of the pressure cooker, there is an arrow that you line up and then you turn the handle until the two sides of the LCD panel line up. When you've done that, you can you hear a click and that's and when those when that LCD panel is lined up, the two, top and the bottom, then you know that you've uh, got the lid on correctly. There is a pressure release valve on the top and if that is down the lid will not open so you're not you don't force you don't try to force the lid if it doesn't want to come open it means there's too much pressure currently built up inside for you to open it safely so you must wait until the pressure decreases before you release the lid so we uh we turned it around so that you'd actually hopefully be able to see it and there's Ali plugging the lead in at the back now I did think perhaps I would fast forward some of this but um I don't don't know which bits to miss which bits to miss out and which not to you've got a really nice uh, space age lcd control panel and a, a really dense woman there peering at it. See that woman in the glass? That's me peering at it like she's never seen anything quite like it before. Ali going, look, pretty lights. Oh, and the pretty lights started flashing, which we found terrifying. So you get four zeros on the front and then it goes to on. <clears throat> and we messed with the valve on top, trying to work out whether it was the right way around or not for ages. There's Ali messing with the valve. Still messing. Two grown women, almost uh, almost a hundred years of life experience between us. And could we fathom whether we'd done this right or not? I could. We, we absolutely could. It felt very loose. Apparently, that is a, a part of the, the safety feature. It's designed to feel loose, so that um, so that it doesn't resist the pressure. The pressure is what makes the valve work, obviously, and it's designed to feel loose for, as part of the safety feature. So then we are peering at the LCD display and trying to work out what on earth it says. Here I am again, peering at the instruction booklet and wondering if we've done that part wrong. In the end, I think we went off and left it. We could hear it. It started to fizz slightly from the front room and I came back out and I said, oh, it's, 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 yeah, I can see a little bit of steam. So I'm sure it's gaining heat in there. And as we, as I said earlier, the reason it took so long to come to pressure was that I had filled it with cold water and I should have filled it with hot water for this um, for this initial cleaning process. And eventually, eventually it did start to do things. So we abandoned it for a while, came back and checked on it and sure enough the countdown had started. It was on a 30 minute setting for the clean and it had started to go down. So we knew it was. So at the end of the um, steam time, we returned to the pressure cooker feeling somewhat trepidatious is that word i'm using it i'm taking trepidatious to release the steam and in a second i'll include a clip with the sound on so that you can hear us and see see how we were dealing with this As you can see, we're not particularly <laughs> feeling very brave at this point. That the, the, the instruction booklet is full of dire warnings about how you must use something to press the nozzle with and you mustn't let the steam touch your steam burns and you'll die and you'll die a horrible, horrible death. And, and I read that very, very clearly and believed every word of it. And I'm sure it's true. Don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not um, I'm not suggesting that it's incorrect, but it filled me with the, the fear of pressure cookers. So um 
so yeah, we made sure that we were safe. That we, not, as you can see, we nudged the valve with the wooden spatula before um, before releasing the pressure. I don't know if you can still see the steam coming out at this point in the video, but it took quite a long time for the steam to actually come out of the pressure cooker. And I think at one point I go back to it and give it another bash with the another another bash with the um, the implement. So, there we go, here we go, going back and giving it another bath. And there goes another shot of steam. So we thought it had slowed down. So we came and opened the, there's my terrified face. <laughs> came and opened the valve a bit more and let another load out. To the um, <clears throat> to the side of the valve, there's a little float thing that pops up when the pressure in the steam cooker has gone. When the pressure cooker, when the pressure in the cooker has gone down, the steam valve pops up to, know, to let you know that it is now safe to open it. So that's what we're waiting for. Um, something that puzzled me was that in all of the YouTube videos I had watched, with the, the little valve had a red end, and mine did not have it. And I was like, have I been sent a faulty one? I joined a couple of Pressure King groups, and I actually posted very quickly on Facebook to say, you know, should mine have a red bit? And got mixed reactions, but several people said theirs didn't, which um, at least set my mind at rest that mine was not broken in any way. So eventually, all the steam seemed to come out. Here I am hitting it with my little wooden spatula again. Couldn't leave it alone, you see. Typical woman. Got to prod and poke things. There's another shot of steam just came out then. It's very loud. It sounds like a train coming into the station. And eventually we got to the point where we thought we might be brave enough to attempt taking the lid off. Um, I think I went in with a bare hand and then bottled it. Came back out and went back in with a tea towel. <laughs> you see my my faltering hand as, I, as I'm sure that the steam's going to come out and, and take all the skin off. So it went back in with the tea towel. I've since discovered it's quite safe to take the lid off with your hand. You know, it's, it's really not as as long as you've let the pressure out, the steam doesn't come flying out the cooker and, and cook your hand on the way out. And uh, there I am admiring my pot of boiling water, which was you know I've seen boiling water before, so I'm not quite sure why I was so, so enthralled by it. Lift that out and pour it away. And what we've achieved by doing this for a steam clean is making sure that any dust from the manufacturing process is gone from inside the, the lid and the steam valves and things like that. So that none of that's <coughs> going to get into my, um, my beef stew. So having poured away that water, clean out the, dried out the pot and popped it back in. I'm pouring in a little bit of oil. We're finding the browning function. Pouring in a little bit of vegetable oil. I'm using the label on the bottle on the way. Why does the label on the vegetable oil always fall off? And then... I did wonder about whether to speed this video up. There I am with that sharp knife again. This is the same knife we opened the box with. This is a very hygienic video. Please don't cook like this at home. In with the um, diced beef. Out with the little bit of tissue that soaks up all the gunk. And we simply stirred that around with the wooden spatula. So at this point, the pressure cooker is acting very much like any old pan would on the hob. It's, uh, it's just got the heat from underneath and you've got the, the oil and the meat in there. And I'm just browning that off. We browned it off nicely. And then I added in a bag of casserole veg. Um, I'd only bought the one bag of casserole veg from Tesco. And on reflection, looking at the size of the pressure cooker, I could easily have put in two bags. I mean, you may pre-prep your own, you may prep your own casserole veg, but I was lazy and bought a pre-prepped bag. So yeah, on the reflection, looking at the size of the meal we got out of it, another bag of veg would have uh, would have bulked out a bit more. You can also cook potatoes by putting the plastic steamer tray in on top of your stew. You can cook potatoes in the steam from the cooking um, without soaking them in the stew itself. This is um, what did I use? Oxo, I think. No, I used a casserole packet mix. I bought a casserole packet mix from Tesco. I think it was a Schwartz one or a Coleman's and that went in. You just need to make sure that you have enough fluid to go up to the minimum level. Which um, I'm sure I checked and Ali, Ali made sure she had. And then we stirred it all around. Back on with the lid. Lining up the arrows to make sure they, they line up. And then turning it until the LCP, LCD panel lines up with itself. We then press the stew button. Literally, there is a button that just says stew. 
it flashes to let you know that it is uh, that it's understood what you want. Then it says on and it begins to build up the pressure. And away we went and left it to do its thing. When we came back, the control panel said end. And uh, I think I detailed Ali to release the steam this time. What we discovered is that I discovered this afterwards in Ferris is that there are two ways to release the pressure from the pressure cooker. You can do what is called a natural pressure release or a quick pressure release. To do the natural pressure release, you just don't go back to it after the end of the cooking time and it will gradually release its own pressure over the period of I think about 15 to 20 minutes from what I've read. This is the advised method if you're cooking a stew or anything wet like a soup and, and you can see why <coughs> what's happening there as Ali's releasing steam is quite a lot of the liquid from inside is <laughs> is spraying out as well and it went everywhere. It spat like fury. So what I say, this is basically stew juices that are gathering all over the top of the pressure cooker and generally making a heck of a mess. And as I said, we've discovered that if we'd left it to do what they call a natural pressure release, that would not have happened. So whilst it's fine to do a quick pressure release for any kind of dry thing, if you're doing a particularly anything with a high liquid concentration, then they recommend that you let it release its own pressure naturally over the slower period of time. And that way you don't get this spattering and this absolute mess everywhere. So because we'd done it that way around, it took us quite a while. I've, I've trimmed a little a lump of footage out, probably another five minutes of us patting away at it and cleaning it up and wondering if we'd done it wrong and so on and so forth. As I say, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. So we Ali, Ali very kind of cleaned up the top of the pressure cooker. And eventually we decided we were brave enough, I think, to open the lid. So turn a quarter turn clockwise until those arrows line back up above the handle there. And then Ali lifts the lid off and voila, in just over 30 minutes, I would say a maximum of 40 minutes, um, including the time it took us to mess around with that valve. So if you've done a natural pressure release, it still would have been done within an hour. That has turned from raw meat and rock hard vegetables into a really nice stew. I added some gravy granules to thicken it up because um, due to the amount of stock that I used and if I'd used more casserole vegetables as I said earlier I probably wouldn't have needed to thicken it so much. Of course you can use a traditional corn flour thickening method as well but I added some gravy granules to thicken this up <coughs> and uh, next up you'll see the finished article. And there it is. We got three decent sized portions of stew out of this um, recipe. This was one pack of diced beef, one bag of um, casserole vegetables, one casserole mix. You could have easily doubled up the quantities and still used the same amount of liquid and had a much, much bigger amount. But because I didn't know what really what I was doing with the pressure cooker, I didn't it didn't occur to me to to get bigger quantities. The meat was lovely, really, really tender. And the vegetables were soft and, and cooked perfectly. It was it was really a lovely stew and to be done in an hour from start to finish was unbelievable. So the next morning, flushed with the success of my beef casserole, I decided I would have a go at a cake. Um, I was surprised to learn that you can make cakes in the pressure cooker. But my oven is very temperamental and cakes come out, um, you know, with a slope and burnt on one side and and they're never, they're never very successful. So I thought I would give it a go. What have you got to lose? I got myself a lemon drizzle cake kit from Tesco's. It's one of those where you add oil, eggs and water. And by the time you've done all that, you wonder what on earth was in the bag. So I think the bag probably just complain, contains flour, dried milk powder and sugar, doesn't it? Anyway, <laughs> popped that into the bowl found myself the correct quantities of water and oil into a jug and then added my eggs. I always add my eggs into a separate receptacle to the cake mix, having learnt a long time ago that although eggs don't know where they're born, so you don't need to keep much of an eye on the best before date on the shell, if you have got a bad one, you'd rather empty it into a separate dish than straight into your recipe top tip from Carla. So that's two eggs going into the jug into which I've already got the oil and the water. 
Um, not very good at filming kitchen videos. This is a new thing for me, filming myself making stuff in the kitchen. So as you can see, I suddenly realised that I needed to move the camera if you guys were actually going to see what I'm doing. So oil and water and eggs into the jug. Give them a quick whisk up with the whisk. Look, admire my whisking technique. And then that simply goes straight into the cake mix stirring as you go and this is a very very quick and simple method for a cake i have to say um I, traditionally i've made plenty of cakes in, in the you know the standard way of creaming the butter and sugar but these cake mixes are an absolute dream to work with because this is over and done with in just a few minutes really so a good mix the thing when you're making cakes in the pressure cooker i, I discovered this by joining pre pressure cooker recipe groups is to use the large round paper cake cases and to use two of them. So you'll see here that I've got two, one inside the other. Um, one of them, of course, remains on the cake, but the other one you're able to use over and over again. So it just helps it prevent burning, um, gives you that extra layer of protection in the bottom of the pressure cooker because all the heat comes from the bottom. So pop my two paper cake cases in, wander off in search of a rubber spatula. Silicon? Silicon spatula. I did lick beaters. I did. Might not look like I did, but I went back and licked them afterwards. Mm. And then in goes the cake mix into the double liners that I showed you before. Scrape out the bowl nicely. Leave a little bit in for the chef, obviously. Always leave a little bit for the chef. And then we pop the lid back on. Because it because we're baking a cake, we don't need to close the steam valve. Uh, the steam valve will remain in the open position for the whole of this process. Um, I did grab the camera just to show you that I was leaving it in the open position. So the, you don't cook it under pressure. It, you know the, the pressure doesn't need to build up. So the steam gradually just vents all the way through the cooking process. And then you cook your cake on the meat setting. I'm not sure why there is a bake setting on the pressure cooker, but all of the recipes that I've seen on the pressure cooker gr recipe groups say that you cook your cake on the meat setting and you increase the time using the plus button to 50 minutes. And and then it will say on. There we go. And then the timer will begin to count down immediately because there is no pressure needed to build up. You don't have to wait for that part. So the little circles go around immediately to tell you that uh, it's started. And here I am 50 odd minutes later. You don't need to wait for the steam to vent because there's no steam in there. It's vented all the way through. Off with the lid. Um, very trepidatious again at this point to see whether my cake was a success or not. Um, poke the top of it just in case my fingers went through and ended up in, in, you know, in a pool of uncooked cake batter. But no, that's a lovely, well-cooked lemon sponge cake. The pot is extremely hot. The copper, the copper inner pot is hot, so you make sure you take that out of the cloth. And uh, find your cooling rack. And I decided the best way to do this was the um, traditional invert the dish technique. So I put the cooling rack on top of the copper bowl. Eventually, I don't know what I was doing in the meantime, put the cooling rack on top of the copper bowl. Use the tea towel still to grasp the edges because remember that's still quite warm. Flip it upside down. Slide the tea towel out. Use the tea towel again to lift the bowl off. <laughs> and there's that secondary paper, paper cake case as I can see I, I, as you can see I'm now able to use again for next time so um, so it's not really as wasteful as it sounds to use two each time because you're really only still going to use the one I thought it looked a bit scorched when I was glancing at it through the paper I thought that looks a bit well done there but <clears throat> as it happened it was absolutely fine I flipped it back over pressed it again to make sure that it was done in the middle and then peel the paper cake casing back to allow it to cool nicely. And it really did, it came off beautifully. It was a lovely, really light and airy sponge cake. 
Really incredibly surprised by this. Much better than the results that I get when I cook a sponge in my oven. There's Molly, very interested in, in lemon cake. Yeah, Molly feels that lemon cake is, is definitely a substance dogs should know more about. <laughs> and um, I got my drizzle mix. To make up the drizzle mix, I think you just add, you add water, if I recall correctly. So a few drops of water into there. And you just mix it really until you're happy with the consistency. I wanted to make sure that it dribbled down into the cake, although the picture on the box was of a kind of a white glacé lemon icing. I wanted to make sure it dribbled more into the cake. So I continued adding drops of water until it was really quite a runny consistency. As you can see, it runs off, runs off the spoon quite fluidly. It's getting very um, dictionary corner here now. A fork with which to prod plenty of holes in my cake to let the uh, drizzle run through even more. So I stabbed my cake all over. And then you proceed to pour the drizzle in. I just kind of went all over the surface of the cake and I think at this point I added a few more drops. I decided it wasn't quite runny enough. Wandered off added a few more drops of water at this point it's easier to add drops off of the ends of your fingers so I held my fingers under the cold tap and then dripped that into the bowl from the ends of my fingers rather than trying to get tiny drops off of the tap because you just end up flooding your icing and starting again and then just drizzled it all over the cake until the whole thing was uh, was covered and this is the final product I've speeded this bit up to save you the tedium of watching me drizzle I added some caster sugar onto the top to give it a bit of a crunchy topping because I think that's nice on the lemon drizzle cake. And I was about to put it onto a plate when I realised that the base was still quite warm. So I left it on the cooling rack a little bit longer and forgot to come back and film the finished product. But there it is. That's my lemon drizzle cake.